smashing spy rings and operating the United States' own worldwide intelligence network is the joint responsibility of several federal agencies, here consolidated and fictively named the U.S. Central Bureau of Intelligence. At home and abroad, the CBI works with maximum secrecy. Its inspectors and special agents supervise their units and develop their cases from undercover field offices. Well, what's up? It's uncanny how the Russians can smell out a double agent. We were that close to planting one of our own men at a listening post inside the Kremlin. Jan Hassert? Yeah. Tossed off a train in Switzerland. The director wants us to develop Boris Mitrov. Frank, I want you to take this case. Leave for Los Angeles as soon as you can. Who will brief me? Los Angeles. They've had a string on Mitrov for over a year now. And there's a break expected within the next 48 hours. Well, I might as well start packing. In Los Angeles is one of the CBI's busiest field offices. Here, for more than 18 months, special agents have been watching the activities of a certain Russian-born American named Boris Mitrov. Boris Mitrov, born in Russia. Well-known musician and Hollywood producer. Robert Avery has been Mitrov's assistant for about a year. Colonel Vladimir Kubilov, nicknamed Vadya, one of the Soviet embassy's big shots and ranking KGB officer in Washington. Adrian Benson, an American multimillionaire and his third wife, Helen Benson. Both are communists. Benson's trying to buy control of the Boris Mitrov film studios. Next. And this is Boris Mitrov's 82-year-old father. He came from Russia aboard a Norwegian freighter which docked in San Francisco yesterday. That's the break you've been expecting? Yes, it is, Mr. Sanford. The arrival of a gentle old man at his son's home in Beverly Hills is a turning point in the Mitrov case, a case destined to evolve into one of the most celebrated counterintelligence operations in CBI history. Papa, this is Helga and Sven. They've been waiting to make you comfortable. Welcome to America, Mr. Mitrov. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Sven, will you get the luggage, please? Yes, sir. Thank you. How do you do, Mr. Avery? Hello, Helga. Oh, this is beautiful. How many families live here with you, boys? One, Papa. Just us. Oh, you mean this is all, all yours? And yours. Everything is so big. <laughs> it must cost much money to run a house like this. Well, in Hollywood, you have to live expensively, and nobody will believe that you're successful. That's so true. <laughs> Why don't I tell Helga to bring some tea? Or would you rather have a drink, Bob? No, thanks. I told Daddy I'd be home early. I'm glad you arrived safely, sir. I'm glad to be here. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'll see you at the studio in the morning. Yeah. I'll be back in a minute, Papa. From the layout of his house to the identities of his associates, the CBI already knows every detail of Mitrov's life. Wherever the subject and his associates go, they are covered by a squad of special agents. So, Papa. So, my picture and your brother's. A long time ago, they disappeared. And some of the men they worked with, no one has heard from them. But they're all right, Papa. I got word through the Russian embassy in Washington. The Russian embassy knows this? Yes. In Moscow, I asked questions everywhere, even at the Kremlin. Nobody had an answer. <laughs> You're here, and they'll be here. I promise you. Well, Boris. Excuse me a minute, Papa. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Vasya. Hello, Boris. I wasn't expecting you. Papa, I want you to meet Vadya Kubalov. He's been very helpful to us. How do you do? It's nice to see you. 
Always a pleasure to meet my son's friends. <laughs> I hope you had a good voyage. Today was best of all. <laughs> Will you excuse me? I still have to unpack. Oh, Sven will help you, Papa. Did you have to come today, Vaja? I didn't want to waste any more time making our final arrangements. Your good health and your father's. Thank you for getting him here. You didn't think we really would, did you? I don't know what I thought. I've been trying for so long. Well, these things are never simple. Uh, Boris, I'm sorry that you couldn't have just taken my word for it instead of making it part of a deal. The papers, by the way, are all drawn up. We'll drive out to the Bensons tomorrow afternoon so you can sign them. What does a banker know about running a studio? For our purposes, he doesn't have to know very much. No, I suppose not. Vajo. Hmm? What about my brothers? Well, they weren't part of our agreement. No, but you said you'd get them over as soon after my father arrived as it was possible. Well, we'll discuss it some other time. We'll discuss it now. Oh, Boris, we're friends in spite of all this business, but surely you must know by now that I can't put that ahead of my work. If you want to help your brothers, you can. It all depends entirely on your future work for us. Hmm? To your brothers. An invisible electronic beam directed against the window pane enables agents to record conversations taking place inside. Oh. Vaja. Hello, Helen, darling. And you're Boris Mitroff. Vaja has told us so much about you. And this is my husband, Adrian. How do you do, Vaja? How do you do? Well, make yourselves comfortable and I'll see we get something to drink. Uh, let me help you, huh? Sit down. Well, I'm glad we're finally going to get these famous papers signed. I'm sure you are. I suppose you intend to make changes in the operation of the studio? As many as necessary to integrate my work for Vaja into the framework of an established company so that I can operate with greater security. How far can Boris be pushed? Well, he has no choice now that his father is here. But if we can get him to come along willingly, I think he'll be very useful. You do all those things and you'll wreck the company and me. My reputation has been built on hard work, and I intend to keep it that way. Of course. It's your reputation we're buying. Well, gentlemen, I hope you're through talking business. It's time to relax. Oh, Boris, we're so glad that you've come in with us at last. Let's drink to our new venture. What would you like? Well, it's a bit early, but old Scotch will do. Week after week, outside and inside, agents watch the studio whose control Boris has been forced to give up to Benson. Testing. One, two, three. Does anybody read me? Mr. Ram just entered the studio. All right, thanks. Mr. Sanford. That was Agent Johnson reporting in, sir. Mr. M just went into the studio. Fine. Are we ready? Well, as soon as we hear anything in there, we flip the switch and she rolls. You're an hour late. What happened? We'll never get this picture done. Everything's going wrong. I've seen you weather tougher storms than this. I've had something on my mind lately. It's nothing to do with the work. You haven't noticed what's been going on, have you? Benson's fired most of our best men. Slow down production. I don't know what else. Why did you sell out, Boris? The company was doing all right. There was still more going out than coming in. You could cut down on expenses, you know. How? Well, stop giving so many parties. Once you've lived a certain way for a long time, you forget how to cut down. It isn't just the money, is it? No, it isn't just the money, Bob. My father there? Look, Papa, 
I may be a little late for dinner tonight. So don't you worry. It's just business. All right, Papa. Bye-bye. Horace? Yes. I'm letting Avery go, hiring an office manager of my own. You're to be in New York the day after tomorrow. You can't come in here and give me orders like that. They're Vajas orders. He told me if you were reluctant to remind you of his promise about your brothers. There's a man I wouldn't trade places with for anything you can name. Thanks, Joe. As the case becomes hotter, the Benson's house is surreptitiously spotted from top to bottom with electronic eavesdropping devices. For in the cutthroat game of international espionage, the CBI can resort to methods not permissible for ordinary law enforcement agencies. Darling, where have you been? Why did you have to wake me up? Why didn't you wake up the whole neighborhood? But I've been looking for you. Weren't we supposed to have dinner at the club? I had to take Vodja to the play. Oh. Where are you going? To New York, on a special mission for Vodja. With Vodja is probably more like it. Don't be ridiculous. You've never criticized Vodja's orders before. How long will you be away? Well, that depends upon Vodja, doesn't it? In New York, Boris knows he must wait for word from Vadya. Any attempt to communicate directly would violate a fundamental rule of espionage. Would you like some tea, Papa? I'd like a little rest first. All right. <laughs> this is his room. Mr. Mitroff? Yes. My name is Frank Sanford, Special Agent, United States Central Bureau of Intelligence. This is Inspector Jenkins, also of the CBI. Uh, please. After you. Your father came in with you. Where is he? In his room, resting. Uh, won't you sit down? May I offer you gentlemen a drink? No, thank you. We're going to show you some photographs, Mr. Mitroff. begin. It all happened so gradually. Mm. 
Vladimir Vladimir Kubilov. Yes. When I first met him... How long ago was that? About ten years ago. Look, I know it's not very popular to like Russians, especially someone connected with the Soviet embassy, but I was born a Russian. I know they're not all bad. Nobody with any intelligence thinks they are. But it happens you're not talking about just any Russian. This man is the Soviet chief of espionage for the United States and Canada. I didn't know that then. I don't believe you're going to see much more of him. The State Department is asking Moscow to recall him because of his affair with Mrs. Benson. His successor is liable not to be as generous. Your income's liable to take a big drop. I never accepted any money from Kubalov. You took everything else. Expensive presents, dinners, champagne, cases of liquor. Caviar by the pound, these things cost money. They had nothing to do with it. They were gifts. Gifts in return for writing letters of introduction to people you knew in Europe. Letters certifying that the Bears were talent scouts employed by your company. I don't see any harm in that. What about your personal introductions here? Introducing communist agents to prominent people you knew. That wasn't harmful either. I was in so deep. Deep enough to allow your business to be used as a cover-up for espionage? That's the price they were asking for allowing my father to come to America. You have an answer for everything, haven't you? I'm sure you'll have one for why you came to New York on their orders once your father was safely here. My brothers weren't safe. In other words, you were perfectly willing to betray your country to help your family. Look, it's like I said before. It all happened so gradually. Look, I'm not going to defend what I did, You but... can't! Mr. Mitroff, do you know the penalty for having collaborated with espionage agents? It's not something you like to let yourself think about. Well, you better start thinking about it right now. Am I under arrest? We came here today only to talk with you. Why? Because you can be useful to us. Why? I, I don't understand. It's very simple. You're valuable to the Russians because of your position and contacts. You're valuable to us for different reasons. You're Russian-born. You speak the language fluently. And they trust you a little because of what you've done. Oh. What is it you want me to do? After you've had time to think this over, we'll talk again. Don't bother. We know the way. I think they meant me to. So finally it has been put into words. They've said what I tried so hard not to let myself even think. Apparently you didn't try hard enough. But you thought it just the same. Oh, Boris, I'm not a fool. I wondered why a man like myself, who for years has been what the Soviet call an enemy of the people, should suddenly be the one person in town who gets food parcels from America and money and other special privileges. But I stopped wondering when I was given the permit to leave Russia. Then I knew what it must be. Oh, Boris, how could you do it? How could you? Not how, why? And I'll tell you why. For you, for you and my brothers. You had no right to decide for us. I had no right to save your lives? No! Nothing what could have happened to me in Russia would be as bad what I have overheard today in this room. That's enough! I don't ask you to be grateful. All I ask All is that... All you ask me to tell you what you did is good. Well, Boris, I will not say this to you. Who are you, anyway? God sitting in judgment? What would you have done had it been my brothers and me? How does anyone know until they have to face it? No, oh, Boris, I'm not judging you. I'm an old man. I have only a few more years at best. Do you have a lifetime? A whole lifetime. But you made a mistake. Your brothers are dead. No matter what lies they tell you, I know. They were killed because they had courage. They spoke out against tyranny. I would have been killed too. 
When I was so old, it was easier just to let me starve to death. I'm not dead. They're not dead! They are dead. <laughs> By tapping telephones, the CBI learns that Vadya has asked Boris to meet him on a sightseeing boat. Equipping a squad of special agents with ingeniously disguised shortwave transmitters, the Bureau sends them along as tourists. This may enable them to find out what actually transpires between Boris and Vadya. How are you today? All right. From trucks along the shore, as well as from small craft following, agents keep the sightseeing boat within radio range. Vajo, did you really want me here in New York, or was this Benson's idea? Doesn't matter. If my plan works out, Benson won't be having many more ideas. What do you mean? Never search for a meaning. Just do as you're told. But who am I working for? From now on, directly with me. I want you to go on giving parties. Big, lavish parties. People really enjoy. We'll foot the bills. I want uh, a number of, uh, how shall I say, colleagues to have the opportunity of mingling with influential Americans, making contacts on a social level. Outwardly, these affairs will be to inspire uh, mutual confidence, to promote Soviet-American friendship. Well, parties are no problem for me. I know that. The point is I have a new man coming in this week. I want you to give a party and invite him and Helen Benson. Well, it's my father's birthday on Friday. He'll be 83. I was planning on giving a small cocktail party. That's perfect. Invite them both to that. All right. Vajo, I have something rather distressing to tell you. You're going to be recalled to Moscow. <laughs> Appreciate your telling me. I'll take care of it. Bye. Tapes of everything recorded go to 666 Fifth Avenue, one of the CBI's undercover field offices in New York. You're going to be recalled to Moscow. Mr. M is here. Send him in. Good afternoon. Mr. Mitrov, come in and sit down. Thank you. Well, how do you feel about your situation? Well, I'm very grateful for the chance you're giving me. No one said anything about giving you a chance, Mitrov, or making a deal. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. Okay. 
Now, the main thing you've got to remember is, is that if there's any noticeable change in your attitude toward them, it could be extremely dangerous. Well, I thought of that when I met with Vajra on the excursion boat yesterday afternoon. Oh? What took place at that meeting? Well, he told me he wanted me to work directly with him from now on. But what did you tell him? That he was being sent back home. Why did you do that? Well, I figured maybe you wanted me to. Certainly, you aren't trusting me with any secrets. Did you tell him where you found this out? I made up a story about having dinner with some State Department people who thought it very funny that the first secretary of the Soviet embassy was being sent all the way back to Moscow for having committed adultery in Washington. Of course, we only have your word that that's what you said. Oh, but it's true. I hope so, for your sake. Mr. Sanford will tell you about the plans we've made. It's been arranged for you to go to Berlin. What? Ostensibly to produce documentary films for the United States government. Send him in. We're assigning a special agent to go with you. We know you'll find him helpful, up to a point. Special Agent Avery. Hello, Boris. Is there anything more you want from me? Not now. Just be ready to leave on a minute's notice. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Goodbye, Mr. Mitrov. Good afternoon, Mr. Mitrov. You gonna be able to handle this all right? Oh, I don't know. I'll work it out somehow. Remember, Avery, a double agent means double danger. Yes, sir, I, I realize it. But Mitrov's been a fast-talking showman all his life. I'm still never sure when the actor stops. He's playing it safe. Everything he's done so far strengthens his position on both sides. Well, it's a beautiful jacket. I'm glad you like it. Oh, yes. It's so American. That's what I like. You're looking very young today, Papa. Oh, I feel young. Mr. Mitrov? Yes. Uh, Mr. Avery is here to see you, sir. Bob Avery here? Uh, yes. Oh, tell him to come right in. Uh, no. I'll see him myself. Excuse me, Papa. to see me? Yes, Boris, I wanted to tell you how... Well, I came to tell you that we're leaving tonight for Berlin. All right. I'll be ready. Boris, we're going to be working together. It'd be a lot easier if we could go on being friends. Sanford and Jenkins aren't very friendly toward me. Why should you be? I know you better. I saw it all happening, and, well, they don't understand you as well as I do. Come have some coffee. Papa's anxious to see you. And thanks, Bob. Under the surface of Papa Mitrov's birthday party, there goes on a deadly game of espionage and counter-espionage. Helen, how nice of you to come. How nice of you to ask me. <laughs> have you met Mr. Victor Darvis? How do you do? It's a pleasure. How do you do, sir? Come along and meet my father. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Darvis, may I present General Everson? General Everson, Mr. Darvis. General Everson. Papa, may I present Mrs. Benson? How do you do? How do you do? Mr. and Mrs. Simpson, Mr. Foy. Hello. Helen, it's important I get in touch with Vajra. Something unusual has happened. This is a party for my boys, too, you know. He's leaving tonight to make some pictures in Germany for the American government. Bon voyage. Thank you, Papa. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. B-58s, General? Yes, sir. The Pentagon's riding off the long-range bomber entirely. Of course, this is very serious. I know, but I only got the call this morning. It's an emergency. The man they were sending was suddenly taken ill. I could hardly refuse. No, I don't suppose you could. Of course, this spoils Vajra's plans for working with you. I had no way of reaching him to tell him. I think Vajra should know about it at once. 
Would you be able to take care of Mr. Darvis if I were to slip out quietly? Oh, yes. Besides, there's some other people I want him to meet. Don't you worry about that. All right. If I shouldn't be able to reach Fadja before you leave, where can he find you? In Berlin, Hotel Amzo. Hotel Amzo. Yes. Amzo. All right, Owen, if I don't see you, the best of luck. Thank you. Helen. Vaja. Didn't you tell Boris that he was to work here in New York directly with you? Of course. Well, he's going to Berlin to make some official films for the government. Why hasn't he told me? Well, he says he didn't know himself until this morning that... Where are you going? To Moscow, my dear. I've been recalled. Recalled? On charges of scandalous conduct. The embassy thinks your charming husband complained about this to the State Department. Oh, Vajay, you frighten me. I can't believe it. Don't worry, Helen. He's made his last mistake. I'll take up the matter of Boris going to Berlin as soon as I get home. Vajay, you must take me with you. You can't make me stay here with Adrian. You won't, will you? You can't. You can't. Back in California, badly shaken by the news about Vadya, Helen Benson finds another shock awaiting her at home. What is this? Microphone. In here. Here. The lamps. Everywhere. In the studio. In my office. Every room in the house. Look at this. A transmitter. Even the cars were wired. How did you find out? A microphone detector. I bought it. The Secret Service must know everything about everybody. Even Vajra. Why didn't you leave? I couldn't leave without you. Let's get out of here. We still have a chance if we can stick together. Knowing well that federal authorities have collected enough evidence to convict them and all their associates, including Boris Mitroff, the Bensons decide to make for the border and seek asylum in Mexico. Your license, please. Oh. Benson. That's right. Over here, please. We'll never make it. It's just a spot check. We're both American citizens. They can't hold us. Unless they've been alerted. Were you alerted the State Department? What are you talking about? Didn't you complain to them about Vajja and me? Any complaints I have to make about Vajja and his phony friend Boris Mitrov, I'll take directly to Moscow. Los Angeles, this is Tijuana. I have the Bensons outside. To arrest the Bensons at this stage would create headlines. Moreover, it would make impossible an audacious plan the CBI is counting on to score a major victory against Soviet espionage by sending Boris right. Mitrov into the Kremlin as an American counter spy. Sorry I kept you waiting. You may go now. Thank you. Overnight, the Mitrov case shifts to West Berlin, still a free world metropolis, though completely surrounded by communist East Germany and Soviet East Berlin. As the chief avenue of escape to freedom for millions of Germans fleeing communism, West Berlin is inevitably a center of intrigue and undercover work. Operating here are agents of four Soviet-controlled espionage machines. Russian, Czech, Polish, and uh, East Germany's newly organized secret police, the MSS. 
At West Berlin's Tempelhof Airport, Boris and Avery are met by the German production manager for the Mitroff film project. He is Hans Grunwald, rumored to be a former Gestapo stool pigeon. This is Bob Avery, my assistant. Bob Avery, I have a car here for you, and I've left the shooting schedule of our first picture at your hotel. That's the spirit of West Berlin. That's right. I like the script. It should make many tourists want to come here. Oh, good. We hope so. The Hotel Am Zoo is on the Kurfürstendamm, the Fifth Avenue of Berlin. It's Mitroff, all right. If now one is four on, four off. Hello, Morning, sir. I'm Mr. Mitroff, sir. Yeah, Mitroff? Yes. I'm the manager. Welcome. How do you do? And I'm here also. How do you do? Your apartment is on the fifth floor. I hope you find it comfortable. I'm sure we will. Thank you. Thank you very much for meeting us at the airport. Oh, and uh, I'd like a production conference at 9.30 in the morning. Very well. Is there anything further I can do to help you get settled? No, thank you. We'll see you at the studio. Right. You know, it's kind of an odd feeling, not knowing what you're going to be doing next. Other than making pictures, we're not going to do anything. Except wait until they make a move. Supposing they don't, they will. But in the meantime, I think I'd better fill you in on what you have to know. <laughs> Which is practically everything. Sometimes the less you know, the better. There's one thing, however. If I'm not around, and you want to get word to our firm, you write out the message, and you drop it in this box. and pulling this knob signals that there's a message to be picked up. It's two-way switches. It works the same in case they want to get in touch with us. But uh, why all this rigmarole? It's safer. We try never to come face to face with any of our own people. You mean I can't betray anyone I don't know, is that it? No, 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 no. You mustn't think that at all. It's standard operating procedure and it applies to everybody. I'm sorry. You know, for someone who's just arrived, you seem to know this place pretty well. What kind of a hotel is this? I think our company works closely with the management here, but that's a subject we never discuss. With Boris still awaiting word from Vadya Kubilov, work at the studio begins on schedule. But then the trouble starts. Boris and Avery feel themselves under constant surveillance. And in production, many problems and delays suggest one thing. Sabotage. No. Nobody hurt. The second accident this week. Who's carelessness? We lose another half day. I'll fire the man responsible. You're the production manager, aren't you? Then you're the man responsible. The way they get the job done properly, I'll get somebody who can. Stop standing around. Get back to your place. You were a little rough on him, weren't you, Boris? Accidents happen. I never have liked him. I know that man. Yeah, Hartman. Isn't that Otto Bergman? Yes, he's a wonderful old man. Good violinist. Of course he is. When did he come on the set? Grunwald hired him yesterday. It's about the only good thing he's ever done. Otto. Boris. Otto Bergman. <laughs> Boris. It's so good to see you. How long has it been? Years and years. I've seen you before, but I didn't want to disturb you. Disturb me? Come, we'll have some coffee. Okay. <laughs> in West Berlin, a tiny island in a sea of communism, it is prudent to be wary of all strangers. Oh, 
thank you very much. So, tell me, what's been happening to you? They call me Lucky Otto. I survived Hitler's concentration camp. And now I escaped from the communists in East Germany. Otto, if there's anything I can do to help. There is. Have Grunewald fired. What? Why? Grunewald works for the Russian secret police. I know it. And so does some of the crew. regularly keep an eye on West Berlin's nightclubs with occasional visits to the Razy, a popular dance hall. The Razy is an ideal place for making unobserved contacts. Guests may telephone anonymously to other tables and also communicate by pneumatic tube. Hello? Yes. Yes, she does. In Washington? Yes, of course. I'll be delighted. Thank you. Mr. Mitro, uh, nice to see you. It's a pleasure. You said on the phone that we had met in Washington and that you knew my brothers? We've never met, Pierre Mitro. I merely mentioned them to simplify matters. You're to come with me. Where are we going? To East Berlin. Do you have no objection? No. Please. Just before dawn, Boris Mitrov disappears through the Brandenburg Gate into Soviet East Berlin. Herr Mitrov? Herr Mitrov? Uh, yes, yes, Your Honor. You are a witness in the trial of Otto Bergman. Do you declare yourself as willing to tell the truth? Yes, of course, but I don't understand. The prisoner understand. has been accused of crimes against the people of the German Democratic Republic. Other witnesses have already testified. I've known this man for a long time, but I don't think that... Do not think. Just tell me. Did the prisoner tell you of a plan to sabotage your film? No, no, he did not. Did he or did he not say that your production manager, Hans Gruenwald, works for the Russian secret police? Does he? Did he or did he not say it? As well as admitting he was a member of a secret organization responsible for the accidents on your set. Boris. Oh, for God's sakes, help me. Yes. Thank you. Otto Bergman, I find you guilty of conduct endangering the security of the German Democratic Republic. Where are we going now? One of our officials is waiting for you. Yes? 
Where? Right. How do you do, Mr. Mitrov? My name is Rosnova. Sit down. Colonel Kubelov needs your help in a delicate matter. Colonel Kubelov is in Berlin? That does not concern you. What does he want? My government plans to invite 50 prominent Americans to go to Moscow. They'll be guests of the state and able to travel wherever they please. Colonel Kubelov would like you to have the names checked. What kind of a check? All of them are supposed to admire Soviet achievements. We want to know if this is so. Any reason why these particular people were chosen? Mr. Mitrov, we don't want to waste champagne and carvey on those who only pretend to like us. Well, let me think. Uh, I have a friend who does legal research for my scripts. It may take time, but she'll get the facts. Good. I will tell Colonel Kubelov. You at the hotel, I'm so? That's right. Your room number? 509. 509. When you're ready, call this number in West Berlin. They'll arrange for us to meet. Back in West Berlin, it becomes clear to Boris and Avery that the events in East Berlin were just one more move in the desperate game both sides are playing. This is great, Boris, just great. They must be planning to use you. This is quite a list. I'm glad you're pleased. I had to kill a man to get it. Now, you didn't kill Bergman. You know that as well as I. I certainly helped. What else could you have done? I could have lied. Look, Boris, in this business, you have to forget nearly every human feeling except your love for your country. Uh, maybe you're right, Bob. I'm beginning to see a lot of things I never saw before. It's all so strange. Everything you read and hear, you just don't believe it. And then one thing happens, and suddenly you know it's very true. Believe me, it is. Another thing I've got to tell you, Bob. Ever since that day in New York, when I first had to face up to what I'd been doing, in my shame, wanting to prove something to my father, myself. I... I've just been going along. And right, now let's get this list of names off to Washington. Within minutes, the names are automatically coded and transmitted by shortwave teletype to Inspector Jenkins at CBI headquarters in Washington. I ran these names through the files. Yes, sir. None of them is a party member, none with a criminal record. Nothing called a notice. Well, here are three that the Russians would never let into Moscow. No, why? Well, they all contributed large sums of money to the counter-revolutionary movements. The Russians know this? Of course they do. I think it's just another one of their smart ways to test Boris. Teletype Avery, a 200-word summary on everything we know about all of these people. Good idea. It might impress them with Boris's resourcefulness. If this works, Avery can proceed according to plan. Then we'll find out for sure if we can trust Boris. In due course, a confidential report on the political and financial standing and the personal habits of every individual on Vadya's guest list reaches Rosnova. Hello. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Mitrov. Yes. A man from the Russian tourist bureau left us for you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 
invitation to Moscow to discuss cultural exchange programs. Train ticket. Official permit. So this is it at last. You expected it? Well, after the Bureau sent the reports on those 50 people they'd asked for, it was bound to happen. Now, what am I supposed to do in Moscow? I don't know. You're a musician, Boris. You'll have to play it by ear. Yeah, but... But anything you see or hear could be valuable. Boris, you've got to realize that the minute you leave here, you're on your own. If you get into trouble, we won't even know you. Oh, I'm aware of that, but... And one more thing I've got to tell you officially. The Bureau would never force a man to go on a job like this. You're free to make up your own mind. Free? No, I'm not. I must go. I was sure you'd say that. Up to a moment ago, I wasn't. Bob, if anything should happen to me, my father will be completely alone. He'll be taken care of. Thank you. Well, I have a, a few final instructions. Okay, go ahead. This is a lighter. It's also an electric pistol. It fires tiny cyanide bullets. It couldn't be more deadly. Here, let me show you how it works. This is a safety. It reloads automatically. You've got 49 slugs left. I'm sorry, I, I could never use anything like that. The instinct for self-preservation is pretty strong. Now, one more thing. We need a code word to warn you in case we learn that you're in danger. It's got to be something connected with the picture business and something distinctive. Distinctive? Code um, How about... Um... Cinerama. You can always use that in a wire. Good. Cinerama it is. From now on, when you hear that word, get out. Get going. Run for your life. Ahead of Boris Mitrov lies Moscow, capital of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Here, in the largest and most important city of the Russian motherland, he will be on his own, facing his ultimate ordeal. Here, he must keep his eyes open and his mind alert. Everything he sees, he must be ready to report, for however unimportant it may seem to him, it may be of help to the CBI. Boris is to arrive in Moscow at the Belarusia station, along with travelers and tourists from Minsk and other cities of Western Russia. Mitrov. I'm a stranger in the city that for many years was my home. Muscovites are my own people. They are warm and friendly by nature. They look happier now, better off than I remember. I don't remember the summers being so warm. so easy in real life, pretending you're a loyal Russian when actually you're an American spy. The punishment for a spy is death. Will I betray myself? This skyscraper is new. Soviet Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The 
Foreign Office. I have an appointment here with General Nikolai Chapayev, the director of the KGB. I must not appear nervous. Comrade Kubelov. Chapayev, may I present Boris Mitrov, General Chapayev. How do you do? Welcome to Moscow. I hope you had a pleasant trip. It was very pleasant. You have been away from Moscow a long time. And what a change. I'm overwhelmed. Yes, in 40 years we have become a colossus of civilization and progress. In the United States, they think that you're preparing for war. Why should we have to make war on America if we cannot produce her? Blanket her economically. We can leave her so far behind that she will cease to be a major power. You believe that? I know it for one reason. Time is on our side. From now on, it is the major duty of every agent, especially in North America, to build up a strong belief in Russia's invincibility. The world must be convinced that it is useless to oppose her in any field. Mr. Mitrov, presently you are working for the American government. Yes, supposedly. Now let me ask you a question. How is it they didn't suspect you when you received and accepted an invitation to Moscow? They wanted me to come on the chance I might pick up some information of value to them. Are we going to know this is not actually your purpose? Oh, I'm unable to prove it. By the way, I almost forgot to commend you on the accuracy of your report on the people we are going to invite to Moscow. Thank you very much. We eliminated the three from the guest list. May I present my congratulations as well? And now we want you to enjoy all Moscow has to offer until we are ready to talk again. I will see you soon. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 Ah, what do you say? I am not sure. <laughs> well, you never stop suspecting. All I am sure of is one double agent in the higher brackets would destroy us both. Enjoy Moscow, they said, until one of them wants me again. For 10 years, I was fooled into believing my brothers were alive. Every so often, I see someone on the street who reminds me of them. Tuesday. Red Square is to the communist what Mecca is to the Muslim. Day after day, the faithful line up by the thousands to enter the shrine of international communism. Wednesday, down to the Moscow Metro. Passengers get a daily preview here of the lavish splendor promised for the communist dream world of tomorrow. Thursday, new buildings everywhere. Moscow is expanding in all directions. New apartments to relieve serious overcrowding. But many people still live three, four, five, even more to a room. The average Russian is more interested in improving living conditions than in politics. Young people who can't marry until they can find a place to live help in the construction in order to be on the waiting list. My brothers and I used to swim at this beach on the Moscova River. The Russian people seem so peace-loving. It's hard to believe they know that their government hopes to impose communism upon the people of the free world.
Friday midnight. Nikolai has sent for me. Is this to be another test? you very carefully and I'm considering to put you in charge of several of our new American units. Thank you. I appreciate the trust you have in me, sir, but honestly, I don't know much about your kind of work. You will be given intensive training in Moscow. I'm not even a member of the Communist Party. Under our new policy, none of our top American agents will be. I'll do my best, of course. For your sake, it better be very good. You know, we don't deal lightly with failure and disloyalty. Yes, I know. Vajas already told me. On the other hand, we always reward loyalty and success. Haven't you found that out? Yes. You mean my father? And your brothers. We hope to arrange for them to join him. Of course, it will take a little time, but we are just trying. Thank you. Saturday. I must visit Moscow University, the tallest building in Europe. I'm told to learn more about what Nikolai calls Russia's master plan for world domination. There are 17,000 students at Moscow University, almost all studying the sciences. They brag that the Soviet Union now graduates three times as many qualified doctors, scientists, and engineers as the United States. While work is hard, tuition is free, and all students receive a monthly paycheck the better the scholar, the more money he earns. But when he graduates, his services belong to the state. You can almost feel the emphasis on education. For example, 10 million Russians are studying English, while in the United States, only about 4,000 Americans are learning Russian. Vajas says the KGB always takes its pick of honor students. According to Vajas, only a very few Russians have ever heard about the KGB's espionage school just outside Moscow. Morning, Madame Puzano. Good morning. Uh, my friend, Mr. Mitrov. How do you do? May we have a drink? You are always welcome, Colonel Kubalov. I wanted my friend to know about your class. This course is based on the theory that every man has his limit of resistance to his feminine charm. And our girls are expert at catering to the uh, preferences and habits of the American male. Now, uh, where is this place supposed to be? Oh, almost anywhere in the States. Any dive near a military base. But it looks so real. You haven't seen anything yet. Come with me. Thank you very much. How do you do? I would like you to meet Mr. Mitrov, Professor Vershinin. How, How do you do? do? These are some of our newest graduates. They've all been issued American passports, and they will be leaving for the United States very soon. We expect them to feel completely integrated in their adopted community. Hmm. Perhaps your guests would like to test them. Oh, no, no. Why don't you? <laughs> well, all right. Uh, um, uh, what's your name, and where were you born? Mary Louise Bethany. I was born in Durham, North Carolina. And uh, where did your father work? Daddy died when I was seven. Mother's a librarian at Chapel Hill. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, where were you born? Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And what makes Milwaukee famous? Our baseball team, the Braves. <laughs> <laughs> Class dismissed. Thank you very much. Pleasure. They're so natural. 
do you do it? Oh, it's hard work. Reading newspapers, running motion picture film and phonograph records over and over again so that every inflection and mannerism can be studied and analyzed. We've created five nationalities, but the American group is our largest. Hmm. You realize, boys, in an emergency, every one of these students could carry in a bomb? After all, the new models aren't much larger than a good-sized grapefruit, and they can be detonated by remote control. Big as America is, there aren't enough Geiger counters in the country to examine every piece of baggage. Well, with all these perfectly trained youngsters, what in the world do you need an old man like me for? And believe me, I feel very old. <laughs> In West Berlin, the CBI gets word that the Bensons left Mexico and have arrived in Germany, ostensibly trying to reach Moscow. I'd like to find out why there's been no action on our travel permit to Moscow. What is the purpose of your trip? The real purpose? I'm a communist. When I can prove that a man in our ranks has turned traitor, I feel it my duty to report him. Why don't you report him to me? This is a vital case. I have to take it to the Kremlin. You came from Mexico. Why didn't you apply for your permit there, or when you were in Copenhagen? I learned this person was going to West Berlin. He left for Moscow before I arrived. Would that be Boris Mitra? I told you this case must be discussed only at top level. I would like to speak to Mr. Robert Avery, please. He's with the Boris Mitroff Company. He can't be disturbed at the moment. They are rehearsing. Oh, but it's imperative that I speak to him. Please uh, tell him uh, the name is Helen Benson. Helen Benson? Yes. I see. Thank you. Bob, I don't know any way of getting in touch with Roger except through Boris. I'm sorry. Boris told me not to give out his Moscow address to anyone. But this is an emergency. Well, not only that I want to see Roger again, but it's a matter of life and death. For Boris as well as Roger. Could you be more specific, Helen? Remember, Boris and I are close friends. Ah, oh, and Boris and Roger are very close friends. That's exactly what my husband is counting on for his scheme. When he gets to Moscow, he plans to destroy Roger by denouncing Boris as an American spy. I want to send a telegram to Boris Mitrov, Hotel National, Moscow. Imperative, you arrive Berlin earliest tomorrow for important Cinerama conference. Avery. The whole trouble comes from Benson's jealousy. His emotional instability and bourgeois prejudices should eliminate him from our ranks completely. We will eliminate both the Bensons. Both? She too has become expendable. There are a great many more changes in our American operations. Most of our present agents will either be transferred or put in cold storage. Long time I advised that. What good is the old time communist agent? Modern espionage needs new young people. Experts in every field, none of them to be known to be on our side or even suspected. You have a part for me in this great new organization? Of course. A desk in the Kremlin, in charge of North American affairs. That suits me perfectly. And who is going to run things in the United States? Oh, there are a number of jobs. They are just considering several new men. My main concern is to find a real expert in public relations. But Boris Mitrov, he would be good. Of course you would say that. You picked him. Hasn't he been doing very well so far? Maybe. Are you very sure, Mitrov? If you are born a Russian, you never stop being one. Besides, we gave him his father. For that, he will be grateful always. Too bad we cannot give him his brothers, too. Philadelphia. Elliot. Tall, thin, gray, electronics. Alfred. Simon. Short, big ears, jet engines. Omaha. Gladys. Blue eyes, blonde, strategic air command. San Francisco. Benjamin. Bushy eyebrows, horse-faced, guided missiles. Oscar, Pittsburgh. Alvin, Cleveland. Stanley, Detroit. Hanson, Brooklyn. John, Los Alamos. Francine, Atlanta. Chester, Miami. Dora, Buffalo.
tie it? No. It just takes concentration. Like learning the score of a symphony. Mr. Mitrov is a quick study. He remembers names and descriptions perfectly. These agents are our real strength. Men and women who lead perfectly normal lives. Nothing suspicious about them. But all of them ready, just waiting for the final countdown. I had no idea your planning was so extensive. Even more than you know yet. I feel like a walking timetable. For instance, first Tuesday afternoon, 5 p.m., Red Lion Pub, Beverly Hilton. First Wednesday at noon, Cocktail Lounge, U.S. Grant, San Diego. Thursday afternoon, Writing Room, Pioneer, Tucson, and... So on and so on for a month. I am very impressed. Thank you. Vajja well, made a good choice. I hope so. Incidentally, Adrian Benson and his wife are arriving in Moscow tonight. Oh, really? He made a nuisance of himself in Berlin, so we thought it was easier to let him come here. Well, I don't want to disturb you anymore. Goodbye. himself. I have important information to give him. No, tomorrow will not do. Yes, I'll hold. Adrian, for heaven's sake, don't get started on the wrong foot with him, too. Tomorrow's time enough. Don't push. Come on. Hello? Very well. I'll call back. <laughs> Fools. Well, that's a fine way to talk about your superiors. Can't you postpone this for a few days? What excuse could I give? I came here before my picture was finished, and I've already delayed my return twice. Suppose you don't appear? The government would become suspicious. And that could be the end of my usefulness for you. How soon can you be ready? Very shortly. It's only a preliminary meeting. I would like to take tonight's plane. There isn't one. Do you have your bags packed? I don't need any. Very good. You will leave first thing in the morning. Vajra leaves me at the new Kova airport. Jets are taking off for everywhere, except Berlin. The East Berlin airport is too small for a big jet, so I must wait for a prop-driven ship. And I'm thankful to get a seat in anything. What do you have to support your charges against Mr. Mitrov? I discovered microphones in Mitrov's studio, in his office and mine. The whole place was wired. American intelligence must know of his activities for the Russian government. Still, he was sent to Berlin and put in charge of making films for the United States. Why? I knew nothing of this. Neither do I. Nor do I believe a word of it. Ask my wife. Just have a minute. Passport, please. Thank you, Ron. And papers, too. Your name is Mitrov? Uh, Boris Mitrov, yes. Thank you. We are all aware that this is a personal attack. By accusing Boris Mitrov, he hopes to compromise me. General Shapayev, 
What made me run away from the United States and leave my home and fortune behind? Adrian Benson wasn't even suspected. I wasn't suspected, was I? Here's a letter from my lawyer in Los Angeles. Read it. We both have been secretly indicted by a federal grand jury for treason. He's responsible for this. He forced me into a partnership with Boris Mitroff. Ask Mitroff to come here. If he'll answer my questions, you'll be convinced he's an American counter-spy. You two will wait outside, please. Get me through to Rostnova in East Berlin at once. Where are you going? To catch a taxi. I have no baggage, nothing to declare. Why do you have no baggage? Because I'm going back to Moscow on tomorrow's plane if I can ever get out of this airport. May I see your passport, please? May I go now? Yes, thank you. This is General Shapayev speaking. Boris Mitrov left on the morning plane for East Berlin. I must get him. Take me to West Berlin. You take me to West Berlin? Sure. Hotel Amzu? I'm too, okay. Good. Hello? Boris Mitrov? Wait, I'll see. He's just left. Attention. Attention all police units. You will arrest on site Boris Mitrov, an American citizen. Here is his description. Attention all police units. Close every checkpoint to West Berlin. Close every checkpoint to West Berlin. Turn around. units. Man answering the description of Boris Mitrov reported dropped by taxi cab in Bernstrasse between Frederick and Knautenstrasse. Car 59 investigate. Car 59 investigate. Car 59 reporting. Arrived at scene. Will investigate. Yeah. <laughs> 
Look, look, I'm an American. I, I wandered into East Berlin by mistake. Move over there. Look, I, I've got a passport. I'd be glad to pay you if you drive me into West Berlin. Put your hands out. Turn around now. All right, move. What are you doing? I just want to light my cigarette. Come on, get to the car. Move. This is car 59. I have Boris Mitrov alive. Your instructions, please. Car 59, take no chances with your prisoner. Give me your location, we will send you assistance. <laughs> Calling car 59. Car 59. What is your location? Car 59, come in. Something's come up at the studio. I have to see him. I'll wait for him in the bar. Start talking, report everything you saw and heard. What? Just talk. Everything we're saying is being recorded, so tell that story. Oh, 
and I memorized all the names and faces of many agents now located in strategic centers throughout the United States. Uh, they are Oscar Pittsburgh, Alvin Cleveland, Stanley Detroit. Elliot, tall, thin, gray, electronics. Simon, short, big ears, jet engines. Gladys, blue eyes, blonde, strategic air command. Benjamin, bushy eyebrows, horse-faced, guided missiles. Hanson, Brooklyn. Uh, John, Los Alamos. Uh, Francine, Atlanta. Uh, Chester, Miami. Dora Buff... Bob, look out! Even before Boris Mitrov's return to the United States, the significant information he obtained in Moscow has been evaluated by bureau experts. Some of it has arrived none too soon. Uncle Jack? Uncle Jack? Uncle Jack, I'd like you to meet Anita. Oh. And this is uh, Raymond How and George. Do? How do you do, George? Oh, Uncle Jack. <laughs> what is your name, please? My name is Mary Louise Bethany. Where were you born? Dorm, North Carolina. We're special agents of the CBI. You're all under arrest. Pick up your bags. Let's go this way. upon whose experiences this story was largely based, now lives quietly in New York. For his services as a double agent and his penetration of the Kremlin, he has received special commendation in the Congress of the United States. It's all right, Papa. I'm fine. You look fine. I'm home. 